what is going on guys coming to you from frozen grunt proof hq in germany temperatures are minus 10 celsius that's pretty damn cold for here we're doing an overnight adventure no crazy equipment just me and a couple military items and we're going out to sleep for the night stick around being a former grunt i've already walked the walk i've slept in the worst conditions possible with limited gear i froze my butt off a lot of you guys have asked so many questions about the u.s army generation 3 stuff especially the modular sleep system that has been around for a long time nothing new there tonight i'm just going to show you guys that it is possible with other cold weather gear to simply bed down in very cold conditions and be okay for the night you probably can't tell but I'm actually sporting all army cold weather stuff. I've got the ninja base layer. I've got the waffle tops and bottoms. And then this is the layer six, extreme cold and wet weather top and bottoms. This is actually how I would go out in similar conditions, prepared for very cold and wet. Listen. That's not all snow crunching that noise. A lot of that's the material. Somehow they took an already loud system and made it even louder. <laughs> like I was walking out of my village and it was so bad. I was starting to wonder if people were gonna start looking out their windows, trying to find out what the hell the noise was going down the street in the middle of the night. Some of you guys have actually asked, Randall, you mentioned a few times that you don't wear stuff like this on a patrol or a real world mission, why not? And sometimes it's because we're hardcore or we're dumb and we forgot it or we're dumb and just don't want to put it on. But a lot of times it's because it's just too damn noisy. If you're on a real world mission where stealth actually is key, you're not going to wear this stuff. We've got the Savada sleep mat. If you don't have it, I recommend trying it out at least because it is well worth the very cheap price. This emergency blanket I have up here, it's actually just wider than a person, which is perfect for emergencies because you can just throw it right down your bivy. Before we get to that, we need to break out the heavy weaponry, which is going to be the marshmallow jacket. Yes, sleeping in the MSS, I will sleep in the marshmallow jacket, especially if I'm exposed all night. Good old military zippers so you can get them stuck and then fix them immediately. Savada actually gives you a recommendation on how to lay out their mat. You can do it either way, but I strongly recommend if you're going to sleep on the ground like this, you use their recommended method. Put the waterproof stuff on the bottom. we lay out just to check any incline start to pack down some snow all right then we've got the mother of all sleep systems the MSS in its entirety So I've got an extra pair of wool socks in case I need them. I've got my ski mask in case I need it. And I've got my booties in case I need them. Usually the MSS is fine if I have on good socks. And I do. I have full wool socks on. So that acts as a pillow. And then it also keeps the damn thing from not rolling up on me. And then of course I do have a little travel pillow. My travel pillow, I also have a liner on the inside in case I'm super trashed and I'm about to jump in here. But I will take my boots off and I'm not really messed up. So we'll be all right. The MSS is a side zip, but I like to kind of have the zipper kind of up, almost in the center of my body if I'm laying on my back. Just because, I don't know, I'm just, I just like it that way. 
boots off, get a little bit of the snow off. People say, well, you got to put them in your sleep system. Okay, how? I don't have a tent. My bivy is connected to the sleeping bags. And which means you can't get the boots down in there. I'm not going to throw them in the bottom of my clean inner sleeping bag. So they're going to sit right there. That's how we do it. I'm going to keep the level six Gore-Tex pants on just because I don't feel the need to take them off. I don't feel like taking them off. If I do start to feel a little too warm, I will take them off. Then I will throw them down at my feet. If I have to take off my marshmallow jacket, it'll go right on the outside of the bivy just to give me some extra protection. Because if I'm taking it off because I'm too warm, I don't want it inside my bag. Oh, got some snow in here. That's not good. You can just zip up the bivy and it'll work. But I like to do the outer smaller bag. A lot of people didn't know this, but the intermediate bag actually goes inside your jungle or lighter bag. It goes on the inside. Moved you guys in a little bit. Thought you might get a little cold or scared over there. I know what you guys are thinking, and yes, this is really how a lot of us slept. There's guys sleeping all over the world like this right now. And a lot of them have their weapons either inside their bag cradled with them, or they got a machine gun sitting right here next to them. That's just how it goes. But you know what? It seems pretty rough, but humans have slept like this for, I don't know, we have been sleeping under the stars since our existence. So when people ask me why I'm doing this crazy stuff, you know, I just remind them that it's not the craziest thing humans do. So like I said, I usually don't like to sleep inside my bag and just have my nose peeking out. I always like to have my head peeking out. So I don't think I need the ski mask. There's literally no wind and the air is very dry. So I'll go ahead and leave the ski mask on. I'll grab it if I need it. Uh, feet are toasty. Everything else is warm, very comfy. I will check in with you guys later. If not, I will see you in the morning. Good night. Hey guys, it's about two in the morning. We're down to minus 11 now. I'm awake because a uh, pack of pigs came by. That's the downside to sleeping in the open is they come out of the woods and they roam the fields. Downside is it woke me up, scared the crap out of me. I mean, nothing happened, but you know, when you hear kind of big animals, within your perimeter pretty close to you it'll get it'll give you a jump on the bright side no hunter was tracking them and tried to take a shot at them while i was in the impact zone <laughs> so that's always good i did have to take off my gore-tex pants those are now down there by my feet well they were they're kind of riding up now but I wasn't sweating, but I felt a little too warm, so I took them off. But otherwise, I am cozy. Very cozy. I feel like I could probably strip down to just the uh, base layer, the ninja suit. You know, it is the coldest temperature we're supposed to get tonight, and it is past 2 in the morning. But I'm going to leave on the waffle top and bottoms, just because I usually wake up pretty damn cold so i'm gonna leave that stuff on and uh yeah should be good as long as i don't start sweating but it's not that warm it's just cozy while i'm up some of you guys have asked what is the lowest temperature i've slept in this system 
So I believe that was in Grafenvir, Germany, doing some training. And it was about minus 20 Celsius. So that was pretty damn cold. I think that's the coldest temperature I've ever slept in overall. But I'll tell you this, I was not in the full MSS. I was just in the intermediate bag and the bivy. I had the base layer, which is what we call the ninja suit. And then I had the old polypro top and bottoms on. In field training, those would always make me too hot and then sweaty and slimy. But I found that I enjoyed sleeping in them more, especially in very cold temperatures. There was multiple nights in those temperatures. But I think the only problem I had was my feet because my feet got wet during the day and I could never get them dry again, which is a common problem for soldiers. Your feet are almost always wet. So that was my only issue. My feet would freeze at night no matter what. And I think um, a couple times I would actually try to put my Gore-Tex jacket around my feet down at the bottom. And it kind of makes you feel better. I don't know if it actually fixed anything. But for everybody else who's sleeping in somewhat normal winter conditions, this system is outstanding. For what you would pay on the civilian market and, you know, anything close to it, you're going to pay three to four times the amount and it's not going to be as tough and it's not going to hold up. Like you definitely cannot abuse the civilian stuff like you can this military stuff, which is why I still carry it around. You know, it was given to me. All right, guys, I'm feeling it again. I'll see you in the morning. guys quit waking me up I'd appreciate it Good morning, guys. Oh. I slept pretty damn good. As you can see, I had to reach for my FR hoodie, balaclava, combat hood, whatever. Oh. I'm glad I put on those booties last night. It would have been rough. My feet are still a little bit cold with them on. But they're not frozen. Well, guys, that's about how it's done. I'm pretty exposed here now that it's light. Ugh, I'm near a walking path right outside my village, so I'm going to go ahead and get up and get out of here. Or at least get packed up. So, Not that I could get in trouble for sleeping here. It's just, uh, you know, just to avoid any kind of drama whatever would come so we'll get up and get out of here as soon as i get the courage to get up you can see i had a little bit of dusting but nothing really froze to me everything did its job ventilated all that my MSS is not a frozen bag. All right, let's go. This is the worst part. Let's see if my light still works. Wow, this is a nice light. Got it on base, but yeah, that survived the night and it works. I like the red light function. These heavy-duty Wild Things booties, these are awesome. Every time I got up to pee, I just walked around in the snow with these and then kicked it back off to get in. No problems. Super strong canvas on the bottom. Now this is what sucks. Putting on 
frozen boots. Ooh. <laughs> If I was going to be moving for the rest of the day, I would take the marshmallow top off and put on the uh, layer six Gore-Tex jacket. I'd put that back on to move because it's it's a lot lighter, and you know I would have to worry about sweating and all that. But since I'm only walking about a mile and a half to my house. I'm gonna leave this on and just take it easy. So it's still minus eight Celsius. That is definitely cool enough to hump it for a little bit with this giant jacket on. It's a good thing I brought extra GoPro batteries because they don't hold a charge very well in the first place. But I had put a new one in when I started to bed down thinking that was going to be enough. But when I first woke up to bring you guys back, that was dead. So yes, what they say about batteries in the cold is definitely true. So check this out, guys. If you gotta get up in a hurry, you don't need to separate all your crap. You're going to use it again anyway. And check it out. As I've said in one of my videos, I like to use the bivy as my waterproof bag inside my ruck, right? I want my pillow and booties to remain water protected. So let's say I'm going out for the rest of the day and I'm doing another overnighter. Well, I'm not gonna separate these and put them in different pouches. I'll just go ahead and throw them in the bottom of my sleeping bag. Those will be waterproof for later. As I said, I'm going home. It doesn't matter, but I also like to do that just to pack up faster. Less to worry about. Then your sleep system is also waterproofed, or as much as it can be. So I didn't need my emergency foil here. Hands are already getting cold from packing up. That's the worst thing for me is my freaking hands. My feet will freeze if I'm sitting around for too long. But when I'm packing up stuff, my hands, Mississippi hands, and ex-smoker hands. You're probably thinking, man, if you take that entire MSS out, that's all you're putting in your ruck. And you would be right. <laughs> that's all that's going into your ruck. But think about it, if you're doing an overnight in a field or combat environment, and you're sleeping in these temperatures, that's all you want. You could mount your sustainment pouches to the outside. Yes, the few times I did go out and sleep in conditions like this, I definitely prioritized warmth over everything else. Some of you ultralight backpackers that argue against military surplus stuff, you think you could overpack one of your expensive backpacks and then force the zipper shut like this? I'd love to see you guys do it. If you didn't rip the zipper off in the process of closing it, it would probably just pop open. Anyway. There you go. Look at this bad boy. It's been through hell. I'll say this though, the Savada mat is warm and comfy, but it could be tougher. extremely light so they could definitely beef it up a little more I'll tell them that somebody send this video to Savada and uh, tell them to grunt proof their stuff what I really like is they have straps for you I always had bungee cords on me <clears throat> especially with the Alice because you could put them on the frame behind your back and a lot of us would use our bungee cords to tie up our sleeping mat the inflatable one. Well, Savada's smart. They give you straps. I'm sure you could break these very easily, you know, but I'm not dragging anything with it. All right, I think we're ready to go, guys.
So that's my bed. Notice as the snow went down from me sleeping on it, I got a couple lumps here. That was pretty uncomfortable, but at least my head remained higher than my feet. That's what I care the most about. And check it out, this bump and this bump, once I started to feel those as I sank, that actually kept me in the middle on my sleeping mat. So once I discovered this one and figured out where it was and over here, you know, sometime in my sleep, I was just like, all right, well, I'll just stay in between these and I won't roll off anymore. <laughs> Field sleep. This bag probably weighs less than 15 pounds. We will put it on the scale when we get back and I'll show you guys. So if you want to backpack like an army dude and be warm, this is the way to do it. And you just got to add a sustainment bag, put some food in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for coming along. Let me know what you thought down below. If I missed something, also let me know. I really appreciate the feedback you guys are giving me and I like the interaction down in the comments. So appreciate that. Make sure you like and subscribe and until the next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Take care of yourselves from Germany.